Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 71. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my College website link. Here. Can you download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 6? If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 6 website. We're talking normal probability distributions. We just got done calculating uh, probability less than a particular x, and then we talked about greater than a particular x, and now we want to talk about between. This is what we want to talk about. We want to be able to calculate the area between. With those three, less than or equal to or less than, greater than or equal to or greater than, and between, you can calculate any probability you want. Now, here's our situation based on past data. Estimate the percentage of scores on the next stat test that will be between 10 and 14 given a mu of 12 and a standard deviation of 2. Of course, we'll calculate our uh, individual probabilities. That's what we're trying to do here. But first, I want to, just like the last two videos, plot a chart, an area chart, and uh, show you the trick for plotting the area between. Now, let's scroll down here. We're going to use our same function we've been doing the last couple videos. I'm going to use equals norm dist. Norm dist. It wants the x. In the last couple of videos, we saw how to create all of these x values here. But I have 0 up to, I think, uh, 20 in increments of 0.1. So I have my x's, which is a relative cell reference, comma. I need my mean, which is that 12, f4, comma. Standard deviation, so I click there and then hit F4 to lock it, comma, and then cumulative. I need a zero here. Don't forget, uh, even one of the quiz questions, the, uh, this is for the probability density function. It doesn't calculate probability, it's calculating the height. We use it so we can you know, plot our uh, area chart. Control Enter, and then double click and send it down highlight the labels, and then highlight all the way down, control shift down arrow. Now I want to create an area chart, insert area. Actually, I'm going to click Escape. I'm going to do that same trick we did last time. Click in one cell, because that always comes out wrong. So I'm going to click right there, control shift down arrow, insert area, and that one. Ooh, that's looking nice. Now notice we're down at the, the 200th row. If you tried to point to the edge and move it, it would take a long time to move back up. So the quick way to do it is Control X to cut, Control Home to jump up to A1, and then Control V to paste it. Now I can move it over here. And uh, whoops, there we go. Sometimes it takes a little while to. I'm going to point to the edge while holding Shift and then click and drag in. I need to fix this. These labels are incorrect and my X values are right there. So with the chart highlighted, I go to Design, Select, Edit. And I'm going to click on that first one, Control Shift Down Arrow, and click OK. Click OK. Now we have our correct X values. I'm going to click here. The last two videos we did two different ways. I'm going to do a third way here. I'm just going to say type test scores mu equals 12 SD for standard deviation equals 2 enter. So we saw three different ways to create labels. I'm going to go up to home and 12 right there for font size. All right, now I'm going to scoot this out of the way. Um, and I want to show you, before we even pop, uh, calculate our probabilities, I want to show you how to add. Because we want visually to show between our, a 10 and a 14 here. Now, this is going to involve the AND. Because what is the area? It's got to be greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to 14. That means the if function that we've been using, we've done it three times so far with these, once with the column and twice with the, the area. But think about this. We have, for an if function, two logical tests. The three other ones we did, there was only one logical test. How are we going to do that? Well, with the AND function. The AND function will take 
a any number of true falses. And if they all come out to be true, then and will deliver a true to the if. So you ready? Equals if. Logical test. Before we've only had one, but now we have two. You type and. And then once you type your and, you just type both logical tests separated by a comma. So we're going to say, is the x greater than or equal to our 10? And I'm going to hit the F4 key right there. Comma, notice the screen tip for the and is showing. And you got to type a colon to get to the next one. Our x is less than or equal to our big one, our 14. And don't forget to hit F4. Oops. F4, I hit 4. Now, um, close parentheses on the AND, and watch the magic of screen tips. Right now, I'm inside of the AND, so it's showing that screen tip. But as soon as I close this off, boom, the IF pops back up. That whole AND will only deliver a true to the logical test if this one, which means greater than or equal to 10, and this one less than or equal to 14. All right, so you ready? I'm going to click at the end. It's always safer to come up here comma, and what's the value if true? That. Dry value if false, double quote, double quote, just like we've done before, close parentheses. Control Enter, and then double click and send it down. Now let's scroll down and just admire the work that you're doing here. Look at that. Is that not so cool? Right at 10, and then right at 14. Oh, that is magic. Now we can take this whole column and add it. I click on the chart, just like we've done before. Design, select, add. The name is going to be this. The series value, so I'm going to delete it as we said before. That gets in the way. Click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow. Click OK. Edit this because it got it wrong. Make sure you have access to it. Edit. Wow, I have to scroll all the way up and click on my test result score. That's our X, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then click OK. Click OK. Let's scroll up and admire our work. The red is in between. That is so magic. And watch this. This is where, you know, uh, if you know how to do statistics in Excel, it's uh, more fun than playing video games or gambling or something like that. I'm going to change this to 8. And watch this. As soon as I hit Enter, watch what happens to this. Boom! It shows it just like that. We'll go back to 10. That really is the beauty of Excel, how everything, we have some uh, variables that change, and everything, the formulas, the charts, the labels, everything are linked. All right, now we want to calculate the area between. And before we calculate our z's and then do our two formulas, one for x and one for z, just think conceptually how Excel calculates probability, always from the smallest whoosh, up to whatever x. We have a 14 and a 10. So if we say, give us the area, the probability from zero, from the negative infinity to 14, it would be everything. If we said negative infinity to 10, it would be everything from there. Ah, we take the bigger area and subtract the smaller area. And that's how you calculate between. Let's go ahead and do it with our x's first. Now think about this. That means we're going to have to have two norm disks in one formula and subtract them, just like last chapter when we had two binom disks and subtract them. Equals norm dist, the big one first, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, comma, 1, and then minus norm dist. Ah, the smaller x, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, comma, 1. So there's our formula. It's always going to be 2. You're welcome to do them two different cells and then uh, um, you know, have another cell that subtracts them. But this certainly is uh, straightforward. If you get the idea in your head that it's big area whoop, minus smaller area, and then I hit Enter. So the based on past data, it would be reasonable to assume that 68.27% of all scores on the next test will be between 10 and 14. Oh, hey, that, that fits our rule. We could have figured that one out without doing our calculations, right? Because how many standard deviations is 10 below 2? Minus 1. How many standard deviations is 14 above? exactly one. So we could have just gone to our normal rule. However, what's nice about the functions, if I then change this 
to 10.5. Just like that, the chart updates our um, probability updates. Now, let's do our Z's. I'm going to convert, make that go back to 10. Our Z's, if you like to do it that way, equals open parentheses. Now, we have our first uh, 10, our uh, first Z right here, relative cell reference, minus our mu locked close parentheses divided by our standard deviation locked F4 key. That'll work. Control Enter and then copy it down. Oh, look at that. If we've done if we'd done our Z's first, we would just immediately realize plus or minus one and we could have just said 68. Right? But here's how to do that calculation with two norm S dist. The S always reminds us that we're doing Z for standard. The S is for standard. So big Z first, that's this one, minus norm S, the small one. Now, don't get confused. Uh, some of the homework problems in, in the real world, you're going to get two negatives. And let me ask you a question. Is negative 2 or negative 1 bigger? Negative 1 is bigger. So you take the negative 1 and then subtract the negative 2. All right, so there you go. Calculating area and making a chart between two values. When we come back, we'll have to be given probability and find x. All right, see you next video.